a sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly 2013 to 2017 session took place in the Assembly Chamber at Gillingham Street, where Assemblyman Orville London moved a motion standing in his name that the Executive Council adopt and facilitate the objectives of the Comprehensive Economic Plan for the Sustainable Development of Tobago for the period 2013 to 2017. Mr. Presiding Officer, I just wish to indicate that what we're trying to do this afternoon is not just to seek approval for a plan, but really to seek approval for a process, for a particular approach to governance that has been adopted by this administration over the past decade. And we in this administration, Mr. Presiding Officer, are aware of our responsibilities and of our challenge. And that is why we have developed the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan of 2000 and 2006. And we are now in a position to bring to this house the Comprehensive Development Plan of 2013 and 2017. But I want to suggest, Mr. Presiding Officer, that we are in a much better position now in 2013 than we were in 2006. Because this Comprehensive Development Plan 2013 to 2017 has actually come to the House after a process of evaluation, consultation, and then presentation, further evaluation, more consultation, until we've had this final presentation. And it is significant that this plan, in fact, encompasses three documents. The review of the economic, Comprehensive Economic Development Plan 2006 to 2010, the actual plan itself, which is titled Redoubling the Effort, CDP 2.0, and then a document that I consider to be very, very important, the Implementation Plan for the Tobago Comprehensive Economic Development Plan 2013 to 2017. We recognized that between 2006 and 2013 or 2012 when this present process started, that there were accomplishments, there were achievements, but there were shortcomings. And I want to say, Mr. Presiding Officer, that this document, which treats with the, 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 the review and our accomplishments and of shortfalls and the lessons learned, should be a must read document for every decision maker in Tobago at every level. The success of this plan is going to depend on Tobago, I would say rather than Tobago people, Tobago persons. And I want to recommend that each individual in the Tobago space has to really ask himself or herself, how can I contribute? What can I do not to frustrate? Because in the final analysis, the success of this plan will depend on each individual. That is the crux of the matter. We have got to get out of the mindset of looking outside of ourselves for the solution. And each of us has got to understand that he or she has to make a contribution. So when the plan speaks to performance management and performance appraisal, the plan also envisages that each individual must be his own performance appraiser, if you want to put it like that. During his presentation, Mr. London, speaking on Tobago's development, informed that the Milshire project is back on track. This is to be accompanied by a letter from the Minister of Finance to me. I refer to the proposed administrative office at Chauvin and the pending court proceeding between the AG and the Tobago House of Assembly. In the set proceeding, the decision of the teacher to enter into a form of financing known as bold for the construction of the proposed administrative office without the consent of the Minister of Finance has been challenged. That's the Minister challenge. 
the THA contends that it does not require the minister's consent to enter into the bold arrangements, including the financing component. It is evident, therefore, that the question as to whether the THA can enter into such agreements, including the financial component, without the consent of the Minister of Finance, is an important issue which requires the guidance of the court. And we always said that, so we don't have a problem with that. I'm informed by the Attorney General that it is proposed that the said proceeding be converted into a construction summons seeking this court's interpretation as to the true extent of the THA's powers under the THA Act, Chapter 2503. In the meantime, however, listen to this. In view of the possibility of the rights of innocent third parties, innocent third parties, in particular, Milshire Properties Limited, the same Milshire Properties Limited that they say we was in collusion with, they now become innocent third parties. And the First Citizens Bank may be adversely affected by the court proceeding that presently constituted. And in the interest of good public administration, I have decided. Now, we didn't ask for it there, but yes, decided to give it in any case. To approve under Section 51B of the THA Act and all of them, the construction of the administrative office as well as the lease and mortgage of the same to the THA and First Citizens Bank Limited, respectively pursuant to the bold arrangements entered into between the THA and Milshire Properties Limited. And two, to approve under Section 51B of the THA Act, expenditure for the payment of lease rents to Milshire Properties Limited under the proposed office lease between the THA and Milshire. So in other words, he is approving every aspect of that transaction between the Tobago House of Assembly Milshire and the FCB. Finance Secretary Joel Jack stood in support of the motion which was moved by Chief Secretary of London. Mr. Presiding Officer, the motion before us invites this Honorable House to consider several issues that arise as we consider the adoption of an appropriate course of action to achieve sustained economic growth for Tobago within the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. The first issue that we must consider is one that summarizes the economic background against which our comprehensive economic development plans were derived. We must first consider the challenges of sustainable economic and social development that continues to confront Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as other regional and non-regional entities. Mr. Presiding Officer, there are a number of new areas on which emphasis will be placed in CDP 2.0. And in resolving that this House mandate the Executive Council to take all appropriate steps to facilitate the fulfillment of the objectives for sustainable economic development of Tobago during the period 2013 to 2015, as outlined in the new plan. With your permission, I would like to recall the advice of the architects of the plan as they considered the way forward. And I quote, critical to the implementation process are the roles to be performed by the Office of the Chief Secretary and by the Tobago Sustainable Development Committee, which will be a standing committee comprised of key stakeholders. The Office of the Chief Secretary will have overall responsibility for implementation and monitoring of the CDP 2.0 and will oversee the divisions as they carry out and roll out the plan. Mr. Presiding Officer, the plan architects go on to recommend the continuation of the particip participatory process in support of the implementation by the way of the development of a CDP website with mechanisms for feedback and public participation, establishment of an annual reporting system 
reflecting annual activities and progress, and sponsored public outreach meetings, workshops, civil society committees, and citizen task forces to advise CDP committee and secretariat on major issues of island-wide concern. Given the nature of the task and the need to set up some of the committees that I mentioned before, the Office of the Chief Secretary will require a significant pool of talented human resources in the form of business planners, project managers, monitoring and evaluation specialists, communications and marketing specialists, financial and management accountants, contract administrators, consultants and administrative reports, just to name a few. Training and even technical assistance will also need to be sourced. We must either seek to divert these resources from our existing pool, not without its consequences, or we must source from other areas. We must provide suitable, we must also provide suitable work environments. All of this must be underwritten by financial resources to support the success of the CDP 2.0. Mr. Presiding Officer, we must ask ourselves the question, what good is a plan if we do not implement and implement successfully? Consequently, Mr. Presiding Officer, we are seeking the approval of this House to adopt the plan in an effort to operationalize it. And Mr. Presiding Officer, let me preface my implementation discussion by saying that the only thing that can hinder the implementation of this CEDP 2.0 is money. As a precursor to the implementation of the plan, as would have been alluded to by the former speaker, there are some integral committees that must be established. And they include the CEDP Coordinating Committee, the Tobago Sustainable Development Committee, and the Tobago Productivity Council, as mentioned by the Secretary of Finance and Development. So Mr. Presiding Officer, once these committees have been established, we would be on the road to operationalizing the plan. Mr. Presiding Officer, there is another aspect of the CEDP that really excites me, and I'm certain it piques the interest of many like-minded Tobagonians, and that is the issue of economic diversification. Mr. Presiding Officer, according to the CEDP 2.0, and with your leave, may I read again page four, page two that is, Item four, a shift must take place in investment in new sectors or newer activities, and there must be diversification of existing sectors to produce goods and services that can compete in the local and international economy, thus providing avenues for sustainable employment and income growth that would make the economy of Tobago more sustainable during the foreseeable future. Mr. Presiding Officer, and what does this mean? It means that new ideas and new initiatives will be embraced with a view to operationalize those which are feasible and viable. It also means, Mr. Presiding Officer, that some existing sectors which can produce and are not producing would have to reevaluate their operations with a view to produce goods and or services. I stand to support this motion because these, these documents as represented by the CDP Volume 1, 2, and allied documents laid in the House a few months ago represent a comprehensive policy framework to guide the, the economic development of Tobago until 2017. This alone places Tobago ahead of many countries in the region, as unfortunately 
Many economies in the Caribbean have been run without a documented policy framework. Indeed, Mr. Presiding Officer, I would challenge anyone to find a document or a plan as comprehensive as this one, no pun intended, anywhere else in the region. And for that, the, this administration must be complemented. At present, Mr. Speak, Mr. Presiding Officer, at present, in this country, Trinidad and Tobago, this country, its economy has been run without the benefit of a documented economic plan and, and framework. Many of us will recall Vision 2020 and the National Medium Term Policy Framework from 2011 to 2014. That framework had seven interconnected pillars of sustainable development and had a framework that would have taken this country hopefully to develop country status. We all know that was abandoned by the present PP, um, government. And it is no wonder that today the economy of Trinidad and Tobago, in spite of um, many attempts, continues to be sluggish and somewhat stuck and mired. It is incumbent upon all those in, this, in, in Tobago, all Tobagonians, to become familiar with what is in the plan, to take the time to look at the various areas of the plan. And, and in so doing, they would basically be able to recognize that if they were to also make that, put their input along these particular lines, that it would go towards that ultimate goal for greater um, human and economic development in Tobago. So the buying of the people of Tobago is quite critical at all levels at all levels, and each of us have a responsibility, therefore, to be able to make as many people as possible converts to this particular um, comprehensive economic development plan. There is also the issue of resources, and we can't say enough about that, that this success of this plan would be highly dependent upon sufficient resources being allocated to establish the economic platform in Tobago, and to be able to allow the various divisions of the assembly to be able to implement the projects and programs necessary to achieve the objectives of the plan. And I just want to basically point to that, because that is critical. This, as I said before, this plan has to be a living and breathing thing. It has to be something that is kept alive by using it, by adhering to to, to, to the prescriptions coming out of it, and by seeking to be able to attain the goals that are in it. Mr. Presiding Officer, when the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan, part one, was being, that process was being put together, I had the opportunity to participate extensively in that process as a representative of a civil society organization and a representative of a statutory authority that operated um, as part of the, the Ministry of Tertiary mm -hmm. Education. And that, that, those agency, that organization was the MTA and the Tobago Youth Council. Mm -hmm. I also, at that point in time, had the opportunity to be a participant in the National Process Division 2020 process. And what was instrumental in, in the process, this process as it came to this Economic Development Plan, Mr. Presiding Officer, is that as a, a representative of the NGO and as a representative of a stakeholder looking in and participating, there was a clear vision on the part of the, uh, the administration that I'm now a part of to ensure that they engaged civil society, they identified key stakeholders, they got the viewpoints of all and sundry to ensure that the, in coming up with a plan that would guide Tobago in the coming years it was representative of the views of a wide cross-section of stakeholders. And this administration that has been led over the last couple of years by the Honorable of the London Chief Secretary deserves a, a round of applause for that kind of effort, Mr. President. Because I remember meetings after meetings in places like now what was then the Hilton, now the Magdalena, and other kinds of locations 
with a view to ensuring that the, the viewpoint of youth, the viewpoint of community activists, the viewpoint of sporting organizations. As a matter of fact, as a presiding officer, I even forgot at that point in time I was also involved in the Tobago Football Association. So I had, in going to those meetings, to represent a number of stakeholders and giving the viewpoint, and there clearly was on the part of the administration, the assembly, an, an, an approach to ensure that the views of all was collected. And that has continued over the years, so presiding officer, even to this, this, this day, with our democratization process, pardon me, that involves our monthly tongue meeting, in an attempt to ensure that at the end of the day, we involve the Tobagonian in the plans. When we look at what has happened, the process, this process, because I think the Chief Secretary said that, this motion is not about accepting, per se, a plan, but is accepting a process that has shown that over the years, prior to 2016, now, that this administration and this assembly has ensured that it engaged stakeholders, it engaged the big unions in coming up with the direction that we must go as an island. I also want to compliment in the plan, two strategic areas. Its developmental goal and its vision. Mr. Presiding Officer, under the priority, strategic priority area, branding Tobago clean, green, safe, and serene, its de development goal to brand Tobago with an image that enjoys wide consensus and which positively portrays the island's economy and society which Tobagonians will be proud to create and will have the effect of mobilizing the energies of the population towards their own development. The vision, Mr. Presiding Officer, an image of Tobago that is clean, green, safe, and serene, consistent with this brand, are a people who are confident in themselves and who are shaping the space that is Tobago in which self-actualization and accommodate, accommodated are encouraged. Chief Secretary, I want to give a commitment that that Tobago Sustainable Development Committee will be set up uh, before the end of next month, and that that committee will, of course, take the responsibility to carry out the functions to oversee this entire process and to ensure that it is. I also want us to bear in mind that the question of performance management and performance-based appraisal and so on, that that has to and will become the norm in the way in which we operate in the Tobago House of Assembly. And in order to do that, as was defined in the plan, each individual rules and responsibilities must be clearly defined and of course a monitoring process at all levels has to be instituted so that we can in fact make persons responsible for the areas over which they have responsibility and I think that this is something that is fundamental. It is not coincidental that the largest of the three volumes is the one on implementation. It's 200 pages. So that this is, is a guide. But I think it, it, it's a very strong guide. It's not a Bible, because I want to indicate that as we review and as we evaluate, there will obviously be opportunities and even the need for us to make changes. And we must, of course, have the flexibility to so do. But I think that when one looks at the process by which we came up with this plan, a significant percentage of the tasks which have been laid out here are tasks which have to be carried out. So, Mr. Presiding Officer, 
as I conclude, I just want to reiterate that a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of consultation has gone into this process. But as someone who has been around this business for a long time, it is not the quality of the plan which is going to be critical. It is the level of the commitment to the plan which will determine whether all this effort uh, is going to be effort that will be, will be done to the benefit of Tobigunians. We have a mandate from the electorate to deliver. We have a mandate to deliver quality service to the people of Tobago who are present today. And we also have a mandate to lay the foundation so that generations of Tobigonians, as I indicated earlier, will have the opportunity to live in a Tobago where they can maximize their potential. It is therefore very important that we do it in a structured way. These documents, Mr. Presiding Officer, do provide us with that opportunity. I urge all of us to ensure that we grasp the opportunity. And I'm saying that if we do, and if we're able to convince, persuade, sensitize, educate, whatever you care to call it, other Tobigonians and Tobago Institute and agencies, I am saying that this administration will go down in history as the administration that was responsible for allowing Tobago to take that quantum leap into a future which is challenging, but opportunity filled, and a future which I think Tobigonians can, in fact, meet with confidence once we do the work. Members, the question for decision is, whereas the challenges of sustainable economic and social development continue to confront Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as other regional and non-regional entities, and whereas in recent years Tobago has made a significant, has made significant progress coping with the issues of underdevelopment as outlined in the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan for Tobago 2006 to 2010, and whereas the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan 2013 to 2017, CEDP 2.0, was informed by a review of the island's accomplishments and challenges in the context of the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan for Tobago 2006 to 2010, and whereas the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan 2013 to 2017 was prepared within a consultative framework that included the input of stakeholders from all sections of the Tobago society, be it resolved that this House formally recognized the Executive Council for its far-reaching and inclusive discussions with stakeholders throughout Tobago in the development of the new plan, and be it further resolved that this House adopt the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan for Tobago 2013 to 2017, and be it further resolved that this House mandate the Executive Council to take all appropriate steps to facilitate the fulfillment of the objectives for the sustainable development of Tobago during the period 2013 to 2017, as outlined in the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan 2013 to 2017. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is therefore approved. You have just seen the eighth sitting of the Tibet House of Assembly, 2013 to 2017. Thank you for joining us. For the Department of Information, I'm Sophie Guillaume.